Hello! Welcome to an unplanned fanside chat! <laughs> in case you can't tell, I'm in the midst of making a costume, and I thought, why not document that? So, here's a fanside chat of my costuming history and what I'm currently working on. Before we get started, trigger warning. Um, at some point in this, I will probably talk about some intestinal issues I have had and the weight fluctuations those caused. Um, so if you think that might be triggering to you for any reason, now might be a good time to peace out. Uh, it's all very medical and clinical. It's not about any eating disorders or body dysmorphia issues or anything, but I still understand how that can be triggering. So. You have been warned. Also, sorry, uh, I am in my living room and it's fairly warm so I leave my windows open but I live on a major street um, so there's a lot of traffic noise. I apologize for that right now but I don't want to shut my windows because I need the breeze. So yeah. Anyway, my history with costuming. Um, as a child, I did not make costumes. My grandmother and my mom made a lot of outfits for me, mostly for my dance recitals or uh, theater plays that I was in, but they did also make me some dresses and other outfits and or would sew things for some of my dolls, you know, things like that. They would try to uh, get me interested in helping out, but I found sewing frightening and tedious, so I wouldn't do it. <laughs> And then uh, I got into college and was a theater major and you had to take stagecraft classes. And so one of those classes I decided to take was Costuming 101. I figured it would help me um, as I went through my theater career, you know, cause a lot of smaller theaters, especially like summer stock and things, you kind of helped out in other departments. You weren't just the actor, you were also part of the crew. So I decided aside from the set building and classes I was taking like that, costuming would help. And so I took the costuming class and then I started helping a lot with like the costuming behind the scenes on um, some of our productions, not necessarily building the costumes, but helping put together the racks for them and helping with the quick changes, et cetera, et cetera. And then I moved out to Los Angeles and I kind of gave up the acting thing, but there's still that girl inside of me. You can take the girl out of the theater, but you can't take the theater out of the girl. So we started learning of all these events happening around us, like the Labyrinth of Jareth Ball or the Jane Austen Evening, which is put on by a local society that does English country dancing throughout the year. And then they have this event. They have many of other events, but this is the one I attend. Um, so my friends and I discovered it and we wanted to go. So my friend and roommate at the time, Rebecca, she had grown up sewing and knew how to use patterns and do all of that. So we bought a pattern. I think it was a Simplicity. Might have been Butterick. Pretty sure it was Simplicity, uh, Regency style gown pattern. And so the two of us went to the fabric district and bought our fabric. Something to know about me, I never buy fabric for historical accuracy. I buy it based on the look that I'm going for. So nine times out of 10, I buy a fabric that is way too heavy, especially when most of these events are happening in the summer. But there we go. Anyway, so she taught me really how to use a pattern to cut it out, to put it together, to sew things, the linings, the fabric, all of that. So thank you, Rebecca. Her fault. No, just kidding. Okay, slightly. Anyway, so. I made this Regency dress, which I have worn over many, many years. And then I decided when I started working at this little website you might have heard of called DeviantArt, um, where I was allowed around a lot of creative people to make more costumes because the group that I started to hang out with there did want to go to the Labyrinth of Jareth Ball with me. And so we all decided to start making costumes for it. So I made things like this steampunk Sith. Uh, I didn't make the corset, I didn't make the hat, but everything else on here, that was my fault. <laughs> and I made this homage to Sherlock Holmes. 
And that's when I started to realize that I like the idea of taking characters that I love regardless of gender and putting them in a historical setting. I hesitate to say this is cosplay because I feel like none of this is good enough to do that term justice, but that's about the closest thing I could say. So I did this cosplay of a steampunk Sith. I did this cosplay of a Sherlock Holmes. I decided I wanted to do a cosplay of Gambit. Gambit did not feel Regency to me, but Gambit felt mid 18th century France. Something about, I think maybe because he's Cajun and can speak a little French a la Louisiana and had the whole like gambling and cards and I just, for some reason it all made sense in my head. So I put together this Gambit cosplay. Now then, and this is around the time that I developed some really gnarly lower intestinal issues. Um, I had two major attacks of a certain type uh, and then I developed another issue on top of that and yada yada, needless to say, I now have some pretty bad IBS. Um, it took me several years to get it under control. So during that time, I dropped a massive amount of weight. And I'm talking like I went from a size 10 to a size two. It was not planned. It's not something that I celebrate or am I like, yay me. It was strictly caused by a medical condition. And once I got hold of it, I started to put back on the weight. Pandemic has made me put on several more pounds on top of that. But I usually set it a comfortable like eight to 10 and I'm fine with that. Right now I am quite a bit above that, but that's okay. Because the thing I have realized is that the Regency style is very forgiving. First of all, I don't have to worry about corsetry. And I don't mean that in the terms of wearing a corset so I can pull myself in and lose like four inches off my waist. I mean it strictly from a um, silhouette aesthetic because Victorian costuming where you have to wear a bustle um, especially requires your garment to sit. A certain way and the corset helps it to sit in that structure. Now the Victorian Sherlock Holmes I made, I couldn't wear the corsetry at that time either, so I built the boning into the dress, but it's not the same. It doesn't hold you in the same way as wearing an actual corset will do, and because there's so much give in it, the boning does tend to start to loosen and um, come out of its casing no matter how well you sewed it. And I was using still boning, not plastic. So I figured Victorian out, Regency in, because not only do I not have to wear the proper kind of corsetry under it, it is very forgiving of fluctuations in weight because the first Jane Austen outfit I made, I could wear anywhere from a size 10 to a size six. Very fluctuating, very forgiving. Not saying when I was at a 10, you couldn't kind of tell that I was pushing the boundaries, but it still fit and it still looked halfway decent. So I went with it. So to that end, the last costume I made a few years ago was this Regency rogue. Um, and then pandemic hit. And so I wasn't going to anything, so I wasn't making anything. Now here we are in 2022. And Comic-Con is back on again. And the Labyrinth of Jareth has started selling tickets again. And I bought tickets for this thing called the Historical Romance Retreat that I attend where you wear historical costuming for many days during the week. And I was shopping for a frame for a poster. So I'd gone to Target and Target didn't have any frames. <laughs> I mean, they had like the little ones, but nothing for a poster size. The next closest store to me was a Joann's. And I went there and they had plenty of frames. So I bought my frame. And while I was there, my brain started going, um, you know, there's fabric upstairs. Maybe you should go up there and look at it because uh, all those events coming up. Maybe you want to make a new outfit because you haven't done it in three years. And I was like, mm, brain, I don't know about that. Brain's like, oh yeah, you do. So I went upstairs and I'm looking at the fabric. And while I'm in the fabric, I decided to look at patterns so that I could get an idea of how much fabric 
I would need to purchase and I came across this pattern. I wasn't planning on buying a pattern. I already have a couple of Regency era style patterns, but this in particular is what I wanted. This robe style. And um, I realized very quickly that I would be making an homage to the angry grape himself, Xiantong, this character, from a story called Mo Dao Zishu by a Chinese author, Mo Sheng Tongshu. Now then, I have done a blog about Mo Dao Zishu mm, about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, over at Make the Fanboy, links below if you want to read it. I will be doing a fan side chat about it at some point, you have been warned. So. I, I don't necessarily do Xian Cheng himself. I am quite a bit older. Um, but I didn't really want to do his sister or his mother either, or his father. So I decided I'm just doing a homage to the Xiang sect. I have bought some black fabric and some purple fabric. The black fabric will be the under dress. The purple will be this. I have bought a stencil of a lotus to try and stencil a lotus pattern on this somewhere under the purple. This is purple shimmery material that's kind of thin. Um, I have some more solid purple to go underneath it. And yeah, that's the plan. I've already um, <laughs> started uh, other things for it. I bought a little... Um, lotus necklace because in the regency era they did tend to wear like little crosses but that doesn't really match so i bought this little lotus necklace um to wear and while i was there i found these lotus charms um and so i bought some beading and i've started to make these so i can wear those as earrings um so yeah we'll see how it goes Hopefully I can do some justice to uh, uh, Xianzheng and the Xiang sect. Um, and yeah, that's what's going on. I also realized that with a basic black gown, I can do several other cosplays. So I've already bought um, some accoutrement for a possible Yuri on Ice one based on this outfit because uh, military style jackets over Regency dresses was very popular. During that time, the military was big. If you've watched any Jane Austen films or read anything about the Regency, you can see that kind of image. Um, so I also realized I could probably do Darth Vader or a Kylo Ren or some kind of other Sith type of Regency uh, homage. And so, yeah. Who knows how many I'll wind up doing before this is all said and done with, but first I have to make the basic gown. So there we go. So I'll be filming uh, some of the stages along the way and until next time. Mm -hmm.